Hello everyone, welcome back to the course, and this lecture we're going to be going over my blocks and comments. Now, my, my blocks is basically just a script, a custom script, uh, thing you're going to need to know for text-based programming. You're also going to need to know comments for text-based programming, but if you choose to continue your programming career, or even within Scratch, these are both very useful to know. And although they're pretty simple on the surface, or at least my blocks is pretty simple on the surface, uh, there's actually a lot to it. So I'm just going to go ahead and go into that. I'm going to go ahead and go to new project in the top right of my, my stuff folder here. I'm going to get loaded into my editor if you're following along with me making these projects or making these programs uh, throughout the course, which I recommend you do. Um, feel free to do that and go ahead and name whatever you want. I'm just going to go ahead and name it my blocks and comments demo for the purpose of this lecture. All right. So there's nine categories in total, and we've gone over the first eight, but there's one at the bottom, the ninth one, this kind of this rose color here called My Blocks. Let's just go ahead and go to My Blocks here at the bottom. And uh, right here, there's this Make a Block button. It's the only really feature to it of this category by itself, um, just this button right here. And so if you click this button, you'll get put into this little editor here where you can make our own custom block. And essentially, if there is a function that we need that is not really available by default in the program, then we can just go ahead and create it here. We can add parameters or not. I won't add parameters to start, but uh, this first box right here is the name. So I'll just go ahead and name my first block. And so run without the screen refresh. What is this? Well, we'll actually get into that uh, as well. I'll also go over each of these three parameters. And uh, yeah, I'll just go ahead and go okay. We'll get this function right here that we can go ahead and drag, and this just calls the function. And this right here is our definition statement, is what we would call that. So basically, this just, uh, every time this function is executed, all the code in here gets executed as you're referencing the script right here. So this is actually no difference, and if you have no parameters in this custom function, you, might, you may as well do broadcast and receive message, because the exact same thing. Whenever you're calling this function, whatever you chose to name it, it'll just broadcast a message and then this definition statement just receives the message and executes code under the statement. For example, let's go ahead and create a uh, when green flag clicked. I'll just go ahead and do a wait one seconds as well and then I'll execute this function which we'll call this uh, definition script. So, sorry, definition statement. We'll have a script under it. I'll just go ahead and go wait, or I'll go ahead and go say hello for two seconds and uh, We'll see that. So my first block gets called and says hello for two seconds. Very cool. So what can we do with this now? So this is just like broadcasting receiving a, a message, right? Like I can just interchange these functions because they're literally the exact same thing. Um, right. And of course, there are advantages to doing my blocks over messages in some cases whenever you're adding parameters. So let me get into that. So. Also, now that you kind of have a rough idea of how the system works for my blocks and custom scripts, uh, it basically run with a screen refresh means that there is no, um, there's less delay going on in the background of your project, like certain background scripts um, that aren't actually, not that you program, but things like within the Scratch API. There's a really good ex uh, definition of it on Scratch Wiki, and again, I recommend you go there for your number one external resource or internal resource, official resource for finding um, information you need but about scratch and uh, I would recommend you don't use it uh, that's just me I never find myself using this for a more advanced project so I'm sure it'll come up again later in this course uh, most likely and we have these three parameters okay so we have the normal value parameter and it just looks like that it's a number or text then we have the uh, scratch refers us to a boolean but really it's just the angular value we talked about because boolean is more than just that and then there's also Oh, we can add strings as well. So I'll just go ahead and go with one, and you can actually remove these with this orange trash can, and you can't remove this first one because it, um, uh, and then you won't have any block to work with, right? So uh, I'll just go ahead and add one parameter. I'll just do this basic number text one. And of course, now I'll actually get a, oh, I never named it. Let's just go ahead and go edit and change the block name. I'll just go ahead and go value demo. I'll go value block demo for the name. I'll just hit enter my keyboard and go okay. And now I got this, Right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy paste my. Oops. I'm gonna go ahead and copy paste this. I'm gonna go ahead and use value block demo. I'm gonna get rid of this. And I have my definition statement for value block demo. So what happens if we. Well, first of all, let's see what happens if we don't actually pass a parameter. Um, oops. 
So it'll still work, right? But you can actually, it's still just like broadcasting receiving a message, but this time you can actually input, uh, you know, you can input uh, a number texture. So let's say we go ahead and use our ask function. They'll just do what's your name. So that's the default. Nice and easy. And then we'll go ahead and set the answer value as our parameter and pass that to the value block demo function. Passing it to our value block demo class. Uh, or sorry, script, not class. But by the way, these are public by default and can be accessed from any class. So that is any sprite or your stage. So your number or text. Okay. So basically, this is the parameter that has been passed to the func or to your script. So if we go ahead and say that, what we're really doing is we're just saying answer because uh, we get prompted with uh, what's your name after a second of running the program. Uh, our answer gets passed to value block demo in the form of this number text value. So now this is equal to our answer. Of course, it's zero by default since we haven't run it yet. And then I'll say that answer for two seconds. Let's test it out. And I'll just go ahead and say Bob is my name. And now it'll say Bob. And of course, you can do whatever you want. You can get our handy join operators here, right? And we can just go ahead and go ahead and say, oops, hello, comma, space, number text. Exclamation mark. Okay, just like that, and that's all you're really doing there. And you can kind of just mess around with that. And notice how we're not using answer; we're actually using number text. We're using the parameter that's been passed. Now, I never use this one right here, which is basically uh, I forgot the name again, didn't I? And I'll just go ahead and name it angle value block. And so basically, this is how you can pass a true or false value to your custom script. And I never find myself using this, but if you want to pass a true or false value, and by default it's zero, so it would say true or false once something's been passed to it. But basically, um, let's say I just go ahead and go one equals one. And then I run that, then my Boolean thing would be equal to true, because one does equals one, but this is or two equal one, then this would be false. And it's just the same logic. And so if you wanted to plug in a just static true or false thing right here, you could go ahead and do that, but I never really use this as I just don't see much of a practical application for it. Um, now we can actually go ahead and add uh, more text. So for example, test, then let's say we add a parameter here, and then we added more test, or sorry, we added more text. Um, so basically, this is just pretty much commentary within our block. So if we wanted to make a our block more clear about what it does, to the user, uh, basically what we could do, and I'm actually going to get rid of this. By the way, if you want to get rid of a block, you can't just right click and delete. What you have to do is you have to get rid of all the references of it and then get rid of the definition for it. Um, oops, I can't click it, can I? <laughs> Alright, there we go. You, once you get rid of the definition statement, which won't let you do that until all the references of it are gone. Once you get rid of the definition statement, it'll be gone. So just keep that in mind. So, let's say we go ahead and go move steps so this basically works the same way that our move uh however many steps we want to move here works and actually um basically what i'll do is we'll just go ahead and go when clicked and we'll say actually this we'll just say how many steps would you like to move Uh, and then I'll just put that there and I'll go ahead and put answer. So it'll move answer steps. Let's say the answer is 10, then it would move uh, 10 steps. But how are we going to pass that? Well, we could just do answer, but we could also just go ahead and pass number or text to it. And so basically this the third thing right here isn't really parameter. It's more of a label so that you can just make your blocks more clear. So we'll say move however many steps and I'll just call this. So let's test it out. So what's your name? Oh, I <laughs> I forgot to get rid of this, didn't I? I'll just get rid of value block demo altogether, and I'll get rid of this one as well. Don't really need it, do I? Just get our screen a little bit cleaner for you guys. And I'll go ahead and run this uh, program, and I just see you like to move, I'll just say 10. That gets passed my script here, and then I'm moving 10 steps, so I have my move and steps fully functional. And that, that's just one way to do it, though. I mean, you can have a million different ways to determine what kind of how many steps you want to move. But I'm just using ask the ask function is it's a fairly simple way to do it. <coughs> so now this is essentially the basic explanation of my blocks. We'll get in much more detail throughout the course. Okay, so that is just a heads up there. And I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of all this. Um, 
Don't really need it. All right. So uh, let's talk about comments now. So let's just go ahead and say, um, let's go ahead and I'll just use two. All I need is a declaration statement is what you would call this, by the way, and a function just to test this out, right? And so if you right click wherever you are, whether it's on a block or outside of the blocks, you can just have this add comment feature. Let's just do it not, uh, not hovering over the blocks real quick. So this is the workspace. Actually, I'll say this is the class for Sprite one here in this class you can find scripts and functions so what what does this do what does this mean all right basically this right one here is our class right or this is a class our stage is also class we added more sprites this would also be classes um and a comment does not affect your code you can have this here wherever you want and i can actually resize it um using this uh, tool right here on the bottom right. I can also go ahead and use this drop down to hide it or show it. I can also get rid of it with this X button here. So in this class, you can find scripts and functions. Great. So how can this be useful? So before I even continue about how it can be useful, I just want to mention most block-based programming languages and even uh, a little while ago in older versions of Scratch, there was actually a category around here um, or depending on the interface for whatever block-based language you're using, there's usually a gray category called comments, and it'll just be like a gray block, and all it is is just text, like pretty much just this type of thing. It'll be like, uh, you can just enter your comment here. This is a test comment. Of course, this isn't actually a comment. That's just like what it would look like. It would be like a gray block, and then you'd have the comment here. In most block-based programming, you don't go ahead and right-click, add comment, and this little sticky note pops up. Uh, and so just a heads up there, but. These come really useful for actually putting commentary within your code. So putting notes and stuff about how things work or, you know, notes for other developers, things like that that are looking at your code. And it basically provides a source from the author of documentation about your code. And that, that can be really cool. And also, if you if you come back to your code later and then you don't remember what you did, it's more helpful if you have comments to actually explain what everything did. So I can go ahead and add comment. If I right click on a block, it'll actually be attached to that block by this kind of string here. And we can drag it all over the place if we'd like. But notice how it's actually the same color as the category color, which in this case, the events category is actually yellow. So it's going to be yellow. But um, let's say I actually added a comment for our save function so we know that it looks as purple. It should be a purple string. And also it'll outline it a little bit here so that we know where it's connecting to. And um, I can just go ahead and save. And again, this does not affect my code whatsoever. So this or everything under this happens when the program is run. Parentheses green flag is clicked. I apologize. My keyboard is a bit loud. I'm aware. And, uh, if we go ahead and look at this C function here, we can go ahead and say uh, this function outputs the first parameter string format for a the second parameters integer format duration. Okay. All right, and I can actually go ahead and if I want to compress this, I can just go ahead and hide these and um, and and just open them up whenever I need them. And I'm not, I don't think you can, yeah, you can't drag them whenever they're uh, hidden, but still a thing there and I can get rid of them like that. So that is comments for you in a nutshell. And there's one more thing I want to talk about in this lecture. And that is the project page. So basically, you can either go to the project page from the editor or the see inside area. And you can also go, if I go to my stuff here, um, there's another way you can get to it. You can go ahead and go to, uh, you click on the thumbnail, which is what this picture is called here. And, or you can click on the title. To click see inside, you'll get taken to the editor. But if you click on the title or thumbnail, you'll get taken to the actual project. Now, the project page, so what's that for? So that's basically kind of the formal presentation for your project. And if you choose to share it, this is what people will see. This is the screen people will get. And the name will be up here, and of course I can edit that. My instructions and notes of credits will be here. Instructions are will be like you know up arrows up, down arrows down, space bar jump, things like that. Um, notes and credits would be you know if you're referencing uh, music that you are maybe allowed to use with permission or things like that, you can reference that there. Or just general notes about your program. Never use 
um, project assets such as sound or sprites or art that someone else has used without their permission because that can get you in a lot of trouble. Now, of course, there's four values here at the bottom, and here we have likes, favorites, remixes, and views. So what are these? So likes and favorites are just something that people who view your project once it's shared are able to do. Uh, and if it's unshared, only you can like and favorite it. But it, it is pretty much just a way of people showing their support for your project in most cases. And of course, this remix, uh, this little spiral right here stands for remixes. And what remixes are is if, if people who are looking at this as a shared project go to your C inside, because uh, everyone will have this C inside option. I'll just take you them straight to the editor. Uh, there will actually be a little remix button up there for them. So if they want to change something in their code, they can remix it. And all the remixes will be shown right here on the right side of the screen. So let's say someone uh, remixes your project and then maybe makes your cat red and makes it say something else or, you know, do, just changes something about the program. So normally it would say buy and then your username, which in my case is Udemy Scratch Course. But if you're actually going ahead and sharing it, or sorry, if you're remixing a shared project, it'll say remix by instead of buy. So that way people don't know that you're not the original author. And then all of the... Uh, so you have like your original project and all the remixes branching off of it kind of create this thing called the remix tree, which is basically just like a family of remixes staying from an original project. Now views are the amount of views, unique views, which means even if the same person has viewed it 10 times, it only counts as one view. So views from different people uh, that have seen your project. And then commenting, you can toggle it so you can disable or enable it by clicking this little slider here. And that's basically just so that uh, other people can comment on your project, leave feedback, things like that. Or you can start and stop the project and go in the full screen, you'll still have the start and stop options. And then again, instructions and credits are instructions and credits, and that is really it. So I really hope you guys found this useful, and I can't wait to get into actually doing those projects now uh, after this lecture. Um, and we're going to go ahead and do beginner, intermediate, advanced projects, and I can't wait to get into doing this with you guys. And... Um, that said, I'll see you guys in the beginner projects if you choose to continue with this course, which I really hope you do, and I'll see you there.